bonjour tout le monde. Allez, homme. All right, let's go. Microphone on. Here we go. So, <clears throat> thank you for joining us on this uh, uh, Zoom, whatever platform. <laughs> Not very tech savvy, uh, a bit of a challenge, but that's always good. Uh, this is through challenges that we grow, so that's good. So, Zoom, uh, which is quite good. I can see a few people. Or Facebook, hello Dora, Tamara, a few people, yes, awesome. Uh, Facebook through um, Australian Friends of Rambam and Yoga Essence Institute, hello, we're here, so let's get started um, with this yoga for back pain. So today I've got a bit of a surprise for you, <laughs> a little bit different. I just want to show you something, a uh, little tool that I use every morning. Um, don't worry, it's not torture. This is a tongue scraper, so I just want to mention that because uh, in the yoga, you might have noticed um, in my traditional yoga, especially on the Friday, this is a little bit more of uh, a hatha practice instead of a vinyasa. Vinyasa is all great to get the blood going and move and a bit more fun, but these are not really the uh, deeper practices of yoga. What's very important is um, that's the principles of Hatha Yoga, is to detoxify, purify the body before and then you can go into purifying the mind. If your body is impure and you have disease, then the mind is obviously quite busy with whatever ache, pains and things are going on in your body. So very important, we have a whole lot of detoxification um, practices which we call the Shakarmas. Uh, this is not properly one of them, but um, this is quite important. Uh, every morning you can scrape your tongue with this little thing. Uh, I know some people go like, oh, it's a bit... Um, I think you just have to take a leap of, leap of faith and just try it one day and when you see the crap that... That's why it's, it's called a, a tongue scraper. <laughs> when you see the crap that is coming out um, of your tongue, white, yellowish, brownish and very thick, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll go like, yeah, no, I don't want to get that back in. So scientifically, for the people who are wondering, you can ask your dentist. Most dentists will tell you to brush your teeth in the morning. Uh, they will often recommend, I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but um, at the back, a lot of the touch brushes at the back, they have uh, like little scrapes. Uh, little trees, whatever it is, so that you scrape your tongue as well. And the dentist will tell you that. And the dentist will tell you, uh, brushing your teeth in the morning first thing, is that you are getting rid of all the toxins that uh, during the night your body is trying to detoxify. So through the mouth, the eyes, nose, and so you get a lot of uh, toxins in, uh, on the tongue in the mouth. So if you just go straight for your breakfast and eat that, it goes straight in your stomach. And the guts are really important because that's where a lot of diseases start. We have a lot of bacteria inside and also outside our bodies. We've got about 1.2 trillion bacteria in and out our bodies with which we couldn't live if we, if we didn't have them. 
Uh, we also have viruses, but let's not get into that. Um, again, we need them to live, and they are part of us. We just try to live more in harmony with all that. So if you don't have a tongue scraper, which you can get on whatever eBay or you know on the internet for pretty cheap, um, if you can get a, a copper one, is better. Otherwise, if you just want to try for a start, um, just a spoon is enough. And I'm not, not going to demonstrate because it's not super pretty, but basically if you stick your tongue out and you just scrape it so you apply some pressure with the side, the edge of the um, spoon on your tongue and you just scrape like this and you will see there is a very thick paste that comes out. Um, you will you will understand if you do it. Uh, you don't want to get that in your stomach. All right. So enough of that. Uh, so that's what I do every morning, uh, amongst other things. Um, Shad Karmas also Jalneti uh, cleansing the nose is very important. Um, if you guys want to, I mean, it's not going to be easy on um, the online thing, but uh, I've been wanting to do that. Some workshop maybe for the Shad Karmas because this is very important. Jalneti is very important especially because we try to do a lot of pranayam breathing which is very important and if you don't do if you don't do that you might have sometimes you know nose is clogging and then you can't practice so it's quite important to do. Again all these practices it's not like you do it once it's you're good forever. Uh, these are things that you learn you improve, you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and you gotta keep practice, practicing. Practicing um, is is what's most important because, again, you can go deeper, and you don't want to lose it. So let's get started today with um, one of the shat karmas. Since I talked about it, so the shat karmas again are the purification processes of hatha yoga, and we'll start with kapalbati. This is the breath. So as usual, if you have uh, back issues, you might have some people with some back issues. Um, it might be starting in lower than the, um, the back, maybe the, the knees or ankles. So if you can't see, sit in Vajrasana, uh, you can sit cross-legged with maybe a cushion or something under your hips, under your, sorry, your, yeah, your buttocks so that your knees are not higher than your hips, ideally. And the idea is that you have a comfortable seat so that you can keep your spine nice and straight. I will sit in Vajrasana because this is a very good pose. I mean, cross-legged can also open up the hips, but this is a very good pose for the knees, ankles, and a lot of our back issues also start on the lower part of the body. This is the foundation. So when you're standing up, obviously, our foundations, feet, knees, and it goes up into the hips, uh, just like a house. If you want to build a house, you're not going to build a roof or upper parts if you don't have strong foundations. So you need to have strong foundations. So it's very good, important to open up the knees. It's also very good for the legs, just the muscle of the legs, stretching the mus muscles of the legs, making it strong. And it also really helps to keep the spine straight. So in terms of uh, breathing, any meditation practice, as I always mention, this is very important to keep the spine nice and straight, shoulders are relaxed, and Kapalbhati, you're going to breathe out the nose, so don't worry about the inhalation, um, it will happen automatically, so we're cleansing the nadis, the energy channels in the body, also very good to balance and strengthen the, the nervous system, very important, so I'll quickly show you how this works. You can bring your right hand on top of your left and just rest your hands on your lap so that your elbows are soft, shoulders relaxed. You can close your eyes. And again, you use your abdominals, so contracting the navel in towards the spine so that you can exhale out the nose. Short, sharp exhalation out the nose. So it goes like this. You take a deep inhale in through your nose. And then you start pumping. So like this, we go for three rounds of 10. You go at your own pace. 
paying attention if you have any uh, stomach issues, heart condition, uh, like operation, things like this, or vertigo, high blood pressure, you might want to refrain from this and just do normal deep breathing in and out through the nose. Also paying attention to any difference of pressure in the ears, if you have, you can just slow down, or if you feel comfortable, maybe you go a little bit um, stronger, a little bit faster, to really exhale, um, you might want to have a box of tissues next to you, uh, don't worry, if there's stuff coming out, uh, just like for the tongue, these are things that you don't want to keep in, so just let it out, you'll blow your nose later, we'll go for 3 rounds of 10, starting now, let's get into it. So nice and straight spine, comfortable, shoulders relaxed, elbows are soft. You can take a deep inhale in through the nose and you exhale out the nose. Up to 10, keeping your eyes closed, relaxing the breath. We're just taking a couple of breaths to feel in the body. If you feel fine, you can go again for your second round. Again, using the abdominal, so contracting navel in towards the spine. Deep inhale in through the nose. the breath again just taking a moment a couple of breath to feel in the body noticing how the mind is relaxed and we go again last round deep inhale in through the nose and you get pumping Relaxing the breath, you can keep your eyes closed. Just feeling into the body. Before we go for our arm chants to open up the practice. So the arm chant also helps to relax the nervous system, going deeper into the layers of the body beyond the physical into the energetical, emotional, and even spiritual. So for those who are new, you can tune in to the first round of Om Chant if you're not too sure. Again, using the breath, deep inhale in through the nose all the way down to your belly. So see if you can use your diaphragm, um, letting your belly expand so that you really take a lot of air in and see if you can get that noise whatever it is for you, whichever vibration, more so like a A from down the <coughs> bottom, pelvic floor to rise all the way up through the belly, the heart, the throat, all the way up to the crown of the head and beyond. You can take a Gyan Mudra, index and thumb together, other fingers straight, you can relax your hands on your lap, Knees, palms facing upwards, spine is still nice and straight. Exhaling the air out the nostrils, we empty the lungs, getting ready. You take a deep inhale in through your nose.
closed format, noticing your thoughts, any feelings into and around the spine. Taking a deep inhale in through your nose, into your chest, out your nose, in, out, gently opening your eyes, we're going to get started, so coming up to a stand, we've got a few people here, hello, if you've just joined, so we'll get into the body, into the movement, so as usual, um, Surya Maskars, so just adjust a bit my mat so that you can see me a bit, losing a bit my fingers, maybe that's alright, uh, so Again, um, so you ask the sun salutations, very important practice of um, yoga. This is very good for the nervous system. We get to work all the systems of the body. So today we'll just go um, into not too many because we'll go for a bit more of a flowy vinyasa practice, uh, not a strong vinyasa. We'll keep it nice and easy for the back, but just trying to get a bit more movement and linking between the poses. I think uh, Monday class was um, quite light, so we'll try to keep it a bit more this way. And I think most people know by now the Surya Namaskar, so I'll we'll get straight into chanting uh, first few rounds nice and easy, so that if we have new people, you can get the gist of it. You just do what you can. Again, not going too deep into any of the asanas at the start. So, Tadasana, top of the mat, feet together, hands, Palms together in front of your heart. You can close your eyes for a moment. Just noticing the grounding of your feet again, having that strong, stable foundation from your feet, knees into your hips. Spine is nice and straight. Um, nice and slowly open your eyes. Inhale in through the nose. Stretching your arms up, fingertips right up to the sky, looking up at your thumbs, opening your arms, keeping your arms parallel in line with your body, nice and slow as you exhale out the nose, you can start to hinge at the hip level, reaching forward with your fingers, crown of the head, so back is flat as much as possible, bending the knees at the start to protect your lower back until you get warm, you fold all the way down to the floor, fingertips to the floor, inhaling, left leg back. You drop your knee, point your toes, and you look up. So looking up is very important. That's where we start working on the spine, opening up into the hips, flexing, um, stretching the hip flexor, hamstring, rolling your eyes upwards, and we're going to be moving into Chaturanga. Nice and slow as you release, you bring your hands onto the floor. So see if you can keep your index finger pointing forward. Fingers are spread out nice and wide, tucking your back toes. Stepping your right leg back. If this is too much already for some, you can always bring your knees down. Otherwise, Chaturanga, nice and strong. So you want to form a nice long line of energy from your heels to your hips, shoulders, shoulders over your wrists, making sure you're not collapsing into your hips. Some people don't have the core strength, so you might just want to keep your knees down. Some people bring their hips up a bit too much, so you're not using the core so much, the shoulders so much. So just stay here, or maybe knees down, and we're moving into Ashtanga, as you exhale, you can bring your knees, bending into your elbows, so arching into your lower back, so you try to keep your hips as high as possible, keeping your elbows off the floor, so bringing the weight of the body on your shoulders, and you try to protract your shoulders away from your ears, chest, forehead to the floor, releasing all the way down to your abdomen, you point your toes, as you inhale, you can start to lift your heart off, Ardha Bhujangasana, using your back muscles, Lower back and glutes, maybe looking up, slowly releasing, tuck your toes, pushing onto your hands, stretching your hips back and up, Adho Svanasana, your first down dog, so nice and easy, you can bend your knees, maybe getting a little bit of movement here, we're taking a few breaths into our down dog, so again, making sure that your index fingers is pointing forward, hands are spread out nice and wide. So you want to make sure that you are not onto your pinky. Some people have a tendency to lift the 
thumb index on the pinky so this just rotates the whole hand not very stable for the upper back so you want to be pressing onto your index and thumb and then on your next inhale you can step your left leg forward right between your hands so using your core muscles you might need to help your with your hand or again gripping the mat with your toes you move your foot all the way behind all the way between your hands back leg is completely relaxed and again looking up as you inhale so we work on the nervous system, working on the spine, so back should be just about straight, opening the hips, slight compression into the neck, and as you exhale, you release, looking down, stepping forward, back to your forward fold, maybe still bending into your knees to protect your lower back. Nice and slow as you inhale, rolling your spine up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Neck comes last, and you reach all the way up to the sky with your fingers, palms together, and as you exhale, you release back down to your hands. We'll take one more easy second round and then we'll get into it. Aum Suryaya Namaha Inhale, stretch your arms up, look up, nice and easy again, not going too deep into any of the asanas. As you exhale, nice and slow, still bending into your knees, you can fall forward. Now this time stepping your right leg back, so we keep switching legs to keep the brain alert. Again, back leg is relaxed, maybe going further, you can bring your hands flat already, still looking up, rolling your eyes upwards. Hold your breath, Chaturanga, again nice and strong shoulders over your wrists, exhaling into Ashtanga, you bring your knees, chest, forehead, so arching into your lower back, bending into your elbows, you bring the weight of the body onto your shoulders, see if you can touch the forehead to the floor, slowly releasing all the way down. Point your toes, inhale, lift up, maybe lifting a little bit higher this time. You can keep your elbows bent, see if you can start looking up, watching your lower back, making sure that you just go as far as comfortable until you get warm. Exhale, stretching back through a child's pose to your down dog. Couple of breaths there, again, paying attention to your down dog. So we'll go for a few down dogs today, since we're going to go through a bit of a Vinyasa, not too much, but just to make sure that you have that position. Again, making sure that you are not onto your pinky. You see me there? Yes. So some people have a tendency to, you might see a bit better on the mat, um, lift up the thumbs, index. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to really press index and thumbs so that you almost lift your pinky. So you want to be thinking of rolling your forearms inwards and at the same time see if you can roll your bicep outwards. So forearm inwards, bicep outwards so that you're opening up into the shoulders and moving your shoulders away from your ears. And we get going on your next inhale. Right leg forward, right between your hands. Back leg is relaxed. Looking up as you inhale. Exhale, release. Looking down, stepping forward. Maybe still bending into your knees to rise all the way up, pressing your feet into the earth. Nice and strong, good stretch into the whole front of the body. Exhale, release. We keep going with the breath in and out through the nose. Just feel the stretches into the body, do what you can. Um, push nine on in. Left leg in, back leg relaxed, look up, hold your breath, Chaturanga, exhale, moving into Ashtanga, knees, chest, forehead, so again elbows are off the floor, close to the body, releasing all the way down to your abdomen, inhale, maybe you can start moving into your Bhujangasana if you feel ready, straightening your elbows, relaxing into the shoulder blades, you look up, exhale, you release, very consciously, with kindness, stretching back, Adamukha Svanasana, your down dog, inhaling, left leg forward, look up, exhale, coming back, forward fold, inhale, rising up, exhale, releasing this experience back down to your heart, we get going with the breath, Right 
Hold your breath. Exhale. Knees, chest, forehead. Inhale. Scooping up into full Bhujanasana. Look up. Shoulders away from the ears. Exhale. Releasing or maybe stretching straight back into your down dog. Inhale. Right foot. Look up. Exhale. Shavasana, relaxing completely for a few breaths, letting go of the muscles that you have just stretched. <clears throat> just noticing the breath, Not noticing what you feel in the body. The legs, pelvic floor, back. And just relax your whole back, your whole spine.
And as usual, we start with our asanas nice and easy. <coughs> Maybe still with your eyes closed on our backs. You can bring your feet together, knees to your chest, wrapping your arms around your legs. Again, you want to get hold of your elbows, so you might need to lift your head up for that. Purnapamanmuktasan. Once you've got the grip of your elbows, relaxing your head back down, keeping your spine nice and long. So see if you can keep your neck, shoulder blades pressing onto the floor. And as you continue pressing your knees into your chest, see if you can bring your hips down as much as possible so that your lower back is flat on the floor. Nice, strong, straight spine. And see if every inhale you can feel the pelvic floor Hip bones pushing back and down, crown of the head reaching up, so you're lengthening into the spine. And as you exhale, see if you can just really soften, you notice the navel going towards the spine, so that maybe your knees can come a bit closer to your chest. <coughs> Shoulders are relaxing, hips are relaxing towards the earth. Deep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. A few more breaths here. In through the nose to lengthen. Feel it in your spine. Out through the nose, relaxing the whole nervous system. Every breath out, you just soften. Again, helping the nervous system to relax. We activate also the parasympathetic nervous system to get rid of toxins, toxin thoughts. One more breath. Nice and slowly moving into Vipalashya Kodasana straight away so you can release the grip of your hands, bringing the sole of the feet together. Again, you might need to, to lift your head up for that. Interlacing your fingers around your feet, so press the soles together and you try to keep your feet as low as possible, so heels towards your buttocks. Once you've got the grip, again, you can Release your head down, spine is nice and long, so if you have knee issues, you take it nice and easy. Otherwise, see if you can start opening your hips out a bit more, so you're pushing your knees out. So pressing the soles together helps to open up a little bit more, so pressing your knees outwards. And you want to keep bringing your feet towards your chest as you keep opening into the hips. So keeping the heels as low as possible to your groin and you bring your feet towards you with your hands shoulders are relaxed again deep breathing focus on the spine focus on the hips all the way down to the spine so as you inhale you lengthen and as you exhale softening into the hips you might notice that your knees open up maybe a little bit are higher staying there for one more breath Very slowly you can release the grip of the hands, stretching your legs out, arms by your side, and just feel into the pelvic region, lower back, hips. Bending into your knees, you can bring your knees up, hands onto your knees, and you can. Gently rock back and forth, gaining some momentum. If you feel this is too much, you can just roll on one side to come to a sit. Otherwise, if you can get some momentum and come all the way onto your feet, standing up. You're going to get some movement happening. Yes, very good. A little bit of fun with this one. All right, let's get going. We're going to go through a bit of a more of a vinyasa, as I mentioned. So again, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. Do what you can. See if you can follow. As you inhale, you stretch your arms up, look up. Maybe still bending into your knees if you need to. As you exhale, softening, folding all the way down. Stepping your left leg back as you inhale. Drop your knee, point your toes, inhaling your arms up. So we're moving into a low lunge. And you can bend your elbows 
See if you can get hold of your left elbow with your right hand. And we're going to tilt slightly to the left to your own ability. So see if you can keep nice and strong into your legs, your hips. So ideally the hips are not moving. And you just tilt from your navel, lower ribs up. So you should be feeling good stretch from your left hip into your left ribs, armpits, all the way to the elbow. You're staying there for a couple of breath, in through the nose, out through the nose. Again, nice and stable into the legs, so pressing your right heel into the earth, squeezing your inner thighs together. We take one more breath, you inhale, you come up, extending your arms up, and as you exhale, you release, hands onto the floor, stepping back, Chaturanga. Going through vinyasa, if you want to build up on your vinyasa, you can stay nice and straight. Otherwise, just like we did before, you bring your knees down, lowering all the way down, elbows are still in close to the body. You can inhale to cobra or up dog, your choice. If you want to build up on the practice, if you have a stronger practice, exhaling back down to your down dog, stretching your hips back. And then we're going to inhale the left leg up. See if you can keep your hips nice and squared as much as possible. So see if you can bring your right heel down towards the floor. So you should be feeling a good stretch into your right hamstring. See if you can lift your heel up, toes of the left foot pointing down as much as possible. So legs are straight and you parallel your hips nice and slow. As you exhale, using your core muscles, you bring your left knee to your chest, coming forward and then extending your legs, stepping forward right between your hands. Fingertips aligned with uh, the front heel, lengthening your heart forward. And you can drop your back knee, maybe keeping your toes tucked under on the right foot, stretching into half the animal. So you might need to move your hands slightly further back towards your knee, making sure that you flex your toe at the front, keeping the spine nice and straight so the aim here is not to reach the head to your leg. The aim is to feel a good stretch into the back of your left leg. So for that, you want to keep your spine nice and straight. So gaze forward, heart forward. So spine is nice and flat. And then you can start working towards folding at the hip level. So you want to be thinking first of bringing your lower ribs to your thigh. Keep flexing your toes. A few deep breaths in here. Nice and slow. Again, in through the nose out through the nose, keeping your hips nice and squared, nice and slow as you inhale, coming forward, lifting your back knee, stepping all the way forward, and you inhale, coming all the way up, palms together, exhale, your release, and we go again, second side, as you inhale, stretch your arms up, look up, exhale, folding forward with compassion, Right leg back as you inhale, you drop your knee, point your toes, reach your arms up. Again, making sure you're nice and strong onto your legs, squeezing your thighs together, getting hold of your right elbow and you fold towards the left. Again, see if you can initiate that lateral stretch from just about the navel, lower ribs, so the hips shouldn't be moving reaching out to the left with your right elbow, trying to keep your elbows stacked as much as possible so you don't want your right elbow to move forward. So again, feel that stretch into the whole left side. Maybe you feel it also onto the uh, front, inside of the right leg, hip flexors. One more breath. Nice and slow as you inhale, coming back, you stretch your arms up, exhale, you release, planting your hands, stretching back, Chaturanga, going through your vinyasa as you exhale, lowering all the way down, knees, chest, forehead or strong body, inhaling, cobra or up dog, exhale, stretch back, down dog, Woo. inhaling, right leg up, so again, see if you can just Really keep your hips nice and squared. You reach your right heel back, toes pointing down. Maybe keeping your left heel on the floor so that you have a bit more stretch into the left leg. Again, hips are squared, so you're going to be thinking of dropping your right hip down. You keep reaching back for one more breath with your right heel. Just like if you wanted to push the back wall away. 
nice and slow as you exhale, knee to chest, coming forward, and then you step forward between your hands, again lengthening, see if you can reach your heart forward, and then you move your fingers back, we move into Ardha Anuman, stretching your right leg, again flex your toes, back is nice and flat, so if you need to reach your hands back closer to your knee for more support, don't hesitate to do so. If you can maybe reach your hips back a little bit more, but making sure that your hips stay nice and squared, so parallel to the short edge of the mat. And again, the back is nice and flat, and you start folding lower ribs to your thigh. Keep flexing your toes, just like if you wanted to give a little kiss to your toes. A few more breaths here. Nice and slow as you inhale, coming back, you step all the way forward, exhale, you fold, forehead to shins, nice and slow as you inhale, you rise all the way up, palms together, exhale, you release, now Utkatasana, bending into your knees, chair pose, reaching your arms up, so very important pose for the back, for the whole foundation, so this is making the legs nice and strong. So you want to be squeezing your toes, knees together, arms up, relaxing into the shoulder blades. So back is nice and flat as much as possible, and you sink your hips down, looking forward. Keep breathing. Are you smiling? I hope you are smiling. <laughs> Keep going, very good. Still have a few people here. They're not dead yet. One more breath. Nice and slow as you exhale, you can release, folding forward. Inhale, flat back, halfway lift, lengthening into the legs, the spine. As you exhale, you fold, stepping your left leg back, inhaling your arms up. Now this time as you exhale, opening out in our warrior two, so you spin your back heel down, 90 degree angle. Tracking your front knee right above your right ankle, extending your arms, relaxing to the shoulder blades. So again, your front knee should be right above your ankle. You should be able to see your front big toe. You relax into your shoulders and you keep looking at your front hand. Deep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. So you really want the breath to go all the way down, just like we did before uh, at the start in our arm chant, all the way down to the abdomen. And as you exhale, it goes all up. Softening a little bit more on each exhale, so you might want to adjust your stance if you need to. The aim is to get your thigh parallel to the floor. Nice and slow, and inhale. You stretch your front leg, turning your right toes in so you can heel to your feet. Moving into what we call goddess pose, a form of Prasarita Padottanasana, toes out to the side, so you want to have your Knees just about above your ankles. Again, you can bring your hands onto your thighs just above your knees with your um, thumbs in, four fingers outside of the leg, and you can straighten your arms. See how much you can do with this one. Might be a little bit strong. Um, again, if you need to bend the elbows, just adjust according to your body and see if you can sink your hips down a little bit more. Maybe you bring your spine nice and straight. See if you can start working the shoulders away from the ears, so this helps really open up into the inside of the legs. And if you can go further, maybe you can start tilting slightly to the right, so bending into your right elbow and pushing with your left hand into your left knee, lengthening into the spine, just like if you wanted to look over your right shoulder. Inhale, coming back to center, straightening both arms. Exhale, you bend into your left elbow, you push with your right hand, so you should be feeling more stretch into your right inner thigh. Looking behind over your left shoulder. Inhale, back to center. We take two more like this. Exhale to the right. Inhale to center. Again, lengthening into the spine. Exhale to the left. So there is a bit of a twisting action here at the same time. Inhale. Last one. Exhale. Feel that twist. Feel the opening into the groin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, coming back to center, straightening your leg, turning your left toes out, extending your arms, 
and you can windmill your arms down, planting your hands, stretching back, chaturanga, nice and slow, lowering all the way down. So see if you can control movement here, keeping your elbows in close to the body, and we come all the way down onto your abdomen, pointing your toes, pointing your fingers, shalabhasana, as you inhale, you lift your toes, toes together, lift your hands, lift your chest, chin up, and see if you can look up, rolling your eyes upwards, so you're using your whole backside here, nice and strong, strengthening the back muscles, the deep core muscles, to hold your spine nice and straight, very good for the posture, very good for the nervous system, keep going, one more breath, Nice and slow as you exhale, oh, you release. Bringing your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes, stretching back, down dog. Inhaling, left leg up. Bend your knee, this time stacking your hips. See if you can keep your shoulders nice and squared as much as possible. Some people, maybe not for everyone, but if you need to stay there, you stay there. Keep opening the hip, or some people might be able to bring the foot behind nice and slow to reverse, flipping your dog, moving into rock star, and you reach back or forward, it would be, but back with your left hand. You need to lift your hips, arching your spine, let your head drop back nice and strong. Very slowly coming back using your deep core muscles, planting your left hand, stretching your left leg back so you can stretch your left leg. Exhale, knee to chest, stepping forward right between your hands, inhaling, rising up, high lunge. See if you can sink down a little bit more. Nice and slow as you exhale, we're gonna bring the right arm under for Garudasan arms so you can just hug yourself. Level one, getting hold of your shoulders. If you can go into the foot pose, palms together. So for the foot pose, <coughs> We're working towards reaching the elbows up, but at the same time, relaxing to the shoulder blades. So, shoulders away from the ears. Nice and slow, we're going to start moving forward for the full pose. Coming forward, and you can cross your right leg over your left. If this is too much, you can just bring your leg into a number four shape. Or if you can go all the way, crossing your leg. Some people might even be able to hook the foot across the calf. Um, a little bit more difficult for men, and we also have tighter hips, especially me with my history of back pain, so I can't really hook my toes, but that's okay, it's um, still good, still good for the hips, and you want to be dropping your hips down as much as possible, and keep reaching your elbows, shoulders are relaxed, one more breath, nice and slow as you exhale, you release, Whoa. Yes, feeling that, you can maybe shake your body, bring your toes back together, and we're going for the second round. Utkatasana, inhale, reaching your arms up, bend into your knees, so again, relax into your shoulder blades. A few deep breaths in here, in through the nose, out through the nose, so you want to be keeping your knees together as much as possible. Now we're going into twist as you exhale, you bring your hands in prayer position, and you're going to twist out. To the right, hooking your left elbow across the outside of your right knee, pressing your palms together, right elbow right up to the sky, and again you want to extend your spine as much as possible, so spine is nice and flat, knees are parallel to the front edge of the mat, so you want to be thinking of pushing your right or left hip, left knee back, and as you inhale, you lengthen, crown of the head forward, tailbone back, couple of breaths here. Keep smiling, I know you love this pose, very good for the legs. Nice and slow, the inhale, coming back to center, extending your arms, exhale, hands in prayer position, and we twist to the other side. Same deal, keeping your knees parallel, so pushing your right hip back, spine is nice and straight, every time you inhale, you want to be lengthening, so working your shoulders away from your ears. Press your palms together, left elbow right up to the sky, and as you exhale, see if you can twist a little bit more, looking up to the sky, feeling that twist into the whole spine. Very good for detoxification. Nice and slow as you inhale, 
coming back to center, extending your arms, exhale, folding forward, inhale, lengthen, halfway lift, lengthening into the spine, the legs, exhale, you fold, right leg back, rising up, high lunge, exhale, opening out for your warrior two, again, get into position, so try to get the same stance that you had on the previous side as much as possible, you keep bending into your front knee. So again, the alignment here, very important. Some people let their knee drop in, not very good for the knee joint or even ankle. So you want to really think of an external rotation in the front leg so that your knee moves right above your ankle. Extending your arms. And you press the outside edge of your back foot onto the floor. Extending your arms. Relaxing into the shoulder blades. You keep looking at your left hand. Deep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. A few more breaths here. Maybe sinking down a little bit more every exhale. Nice and slow as you inhale, straightening your left leg, you turn your left toes in, keeping the stance nice and wide, or maybe even a little bit wider. You can bring your hands into your back, interlacing your fingers, so you might want to go the odd way, so just change it, usually you just go the easy way, change it to the odd way, stretching your arms back as you inhale, pressing your palms together, looking up, and as you exhale, folding forward. See if you can start working your thumbs away from your sacrum, so arms are straight as much as possible, pressing your palms together, and you let your shoulders relax. Crown of the head is working towards the floor. See if you can open up a little bit more into your shoulders. So very important, we often hold a lot of tension in the shoulders. This is also not very good for the upper back. So any neck issue or middle back issue might be because of tight shoulders, hunching forward with all um, computer work, phones, all these things that we do that makes us hunch forward. So very good stretch here for the shoulders. Just trying to let go of any tension as you exhale. Nice and slow as you inhale, rising up, just like if someone was pulling from your hands. You come all the way up, extending your arms out, you release, turning your left toes. Exhale, you windmill your arms down, plant your hands, stretching back, chaturanga, going through vinyasa. You can always keep it if you feel this is too much. Lowering all the way down, pointing your toes. Now we're going to go for... Tanrasan, a bit of a strong pose, bow pose, where you get hold of your ankles, four fingers on the outside, thumb on the inside. You exhale your breath, and as you inhale, you lift, kicking your feet into your hands, lifting your chest, chin up, looking upwards. See if you can keep your knees together as much as possible, and you keep pointing your toes up to the sky. So again, kicking your feet into your hands so that you should be feeling the stretch into your shoulders. Looking up, very good for the nervous system, for the spine, staying there for a few breaths. I know it's a little bit hard, keep going, keep breathing. Only a couple more breaths. In through the nose, out through the nose. See if you can roll your eyes upwards. Look up, chin up, nice and slow, you release. Ah. Hands under your chest, tucking your toes under, stretching back, maybe through a child's pose, and then down dog. Ooh, feeling that, nice and slow, inhaling, right leg up, bend your knees, like your hips, so opening the body a little bit, again you can stay there, if you want to go further, you can flip, nice and slow, control movement, placing your right foot behind you, lift your hips, so you want to really push onto your feet, so that you lift your hips, drop your head back, half forward, reach back with your right hand, a few right here, and again, you want to be using your core to come back nice and slow. You lift your right leg up, right hand onto the floor, knee to chest. Reaching your arms up. 
we're moving to the other lesson, so left arm under this time, getting hold of your elbows, sorry, shoulders, and then maybe hands together if you feel you can take it. Again, the cue here to really work into the pose properly is to lift your hands away from your face, elbows up, and again, you want to be relaxing the shoulders, so once you've got your elbows up, you bring your whole arms, shoulders down, so shoulder blades down towards the back, and then moving into your full pose. Coming forward, again, either number four shape, or wrapping your uh, leg, left leg around your right, Stay there for a few deep breath. Again, see if you can sink down, but keep bringing your elbows up. So you keep looking between your arms. A bit of a challenge. You don't have so much view. It's a bit blocked by your arms. Nice and slow. We're going to start to unwind. Stretching your arms out. And we're moving back into... Utkatasana, reaching your arms up. Nice and slow, we're going to start coming down. See if you can keep your arms up. So some people might need the help of the hands. If you can keep your arms up, see if you can come down as much as possible until you sit as gracefully as possible and you come onto your back. Oh. Almost there. So just take a moment to breathe and we'll move into Ananda Balasana very good pose for the back so reaching your legs up you can get hold of the outside edge of your feet so there's a couple of options maybe um, easier option might be to get hold of your big toes with your peace fingers outside of the feet or maybe a bit stronger you can bring um, your hands on the inside of the feet getting hold of the outside edge of your feet from the inside and either way, the idea is to, again, lengthen into the spine so your hips should be on the floor as much as possible and you bring your knees towards your armpits. So your ankle should be right above your knee, almost 90 degree angle. So I see very often some people just extending the legs out. This is a little bit different. You can do that as well, but that's quite different. Uh, if you really want to stretch into the back of the legs, you want to keep your knee and ankles stacked. And if you want to go for some variation, yes, you can maybe extend just one leg at a time so that you don't lose your balance. And you keep bending a bit more into your other knee. And then you just switch, just playing around a bit as you wind down. So before we wind down and we go into our Shavasana, I just want to make a quick announcement. So try to pay attention from next week. I think I missed it maybe today. I'm not sure they're right. But from next week onwards, we're going to move the practice forward 15 minutes. So we will be starting at 7.45 just to make sure that uh, everyone can finish a little bit before 9 if you have any commitments of any kind. Coming to nine, nice and slow, you can release from your happy baby. Maybe giving yourself a last hug, knees to chest. Maybe curling into a little ball, lifting your head up, bringing your nose between your knees. Maybe already closing your eyes. And very slowly, still with your eyes closed, you can roll your spine all the way down, head onto the floor. Extending your legs out, arms by your side, Shavasana, relaxing completely. So just let go of the breath. Let go of any tension, be it in the body, the mind. Just soften there for a moment. All you need to do 
is to watch the movement of the breath, how it feels in the body. Integrating the practice. We've done a lot of movement today, vinyasa, activating the sympathetic nervous system. So very important to take the time to balance the energies activating the parasympathetic nervous system. moment of calm, peace, where you can really feel what's happening in the body. You might notice your blood circulation, some tingling. state of your muscles, joints, maybe some organs, most probably you have noticed the quietening of the heartbeat. Last but not least of the organs, your brain. Noticing the brain activity has reduced. 